18. Well, almost. Papa, you talk to me, and it must be English, because I recognize the words. But you sure don't get through to me. Well, let me put it this way to you, Judy. You're 21, and you're Varner, and if you're feeling your oats... Don't you understand? I just found her on the side of the road. I felt sorry for her, and I thought I'd bring her... Hush. Wait, who do you think you're going, Missy? Don't come on. Wait till we get on, sister. Just you wait. You're going home now. Get in that car. You no, I'm not. I'm never going home. Yes, get in there. to know every time you're near and the touch of a breeze gently stirs all the trees and a bird wants to please my ear the long hot summer oh so slowly moves along Long hot summer. A thunderstorm. And Jody Varner driving home on a road he's never driven before. And at this moment, a frightened young girl runs out of nowhere. Pure chance. And yet from this moment, the course of a life is changed. Howdy, mister. Sure would appreciate a ride. What's the matter? Are you trying to get yourself killed? I'm trying to get a ride. Well, mister, it's wet out here. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Jump in. Oh, I, I come through the field. I, I, I get an old sweater back here. Oh. Thank you. My name's Jody Varner. What's yours? Oh, uh, Eula Johnson. Did it help any? Yeah, thank you. This thing run? Well, sure, where are you headed? Oh, well, I tell you the truth, it don't much matter. She to come out here. She's got a ride or something. I don't know why my sister do a thing like this. I just don't. You're getting awful sick of you, John Wesley. You'd be wise to hush up. Well, it wasn't my fault, Curly Dog. What are we gonna do now? We're gonna stop mass, boy. Every juke joint, rib joint, hotel, motel, and roadside barbecue. I've been looking forward to this night a long time, and I sure don't plan to spend it with you. Oh, no, I was down to Sahaxia on business for my father. Kind of in a rush to get back. Don't want to be late, especially tonight. Why tonight? My birthday. Sure enough. 21 today. Wish I'd have known. I'd have baked a cake. Uh, drink up, John. Thank you. Well. Doctor, is that an empty glass you're holding? Reckon we'd better refill your prescription, eh? <laughs> Andrew. Andrew. Coming, sir. Thank you, Andrew. There's nothing sadder than a washed-out garden party. Unless it is stood up blonde. That brother of yours is about to howl an end. Hope it's not my son and heir you're speaking of. Oh, no offense, Mr. Varner, but how a fine man like you could have such a dim bulb of a son like Jody is far beyond me. Susan is feeling abandoned, Papa. Well, come now. Boy got caught in a flood down in Sahaxia. A flood? In this sprinkle? Worse down there. A likely story. Something held him up. He'll be along presently. Hey, you girls feeling warm? And not warm, sir. It's stifling. 
I'll see what's happened to the air conditioner. Just a minute, Missy. I'll see about it myself. No trouble. Papa, I swear. What was that all about? You don't know it, but Beelzebub is roaming through the inner ends of this house right now, crawling on all fours. What? Ben Quick is fixing the air conditioner. Ben Quick? Is this her? They're melting out there, Bowman. Melting like butter. All for God, Mr. Will. Just another minute or two. Bowman, you got a quarter-inch wing nut. Howdy, Mr. Viner. How's your party? Be a sight better when you get that thing fixed. Here you are. Just a loose fan belt, that's all. Bowman, well, why don't you go home? I'll finish up. I might just do that if you don't mind. Not at all. Make sure you clean up before you leave. And when you leave, leave by the back door. Yes, sir, Mr. Vaughn, I'll do that for now. But someday, I'll dine at your table, and you pass me the wine and walnuts, and we'll both pretend we're quality. <laughs> if gold were feathers, boy, you'd soar like an eagle. Bowman. It's no burning secret that I wasn't exactly out of my mind with joy when that young fella came back to town. How come you had to bring him to my house? I've been needing the help from Mr. Will, part-time. And it had to be him. But he turned out to be pretty handy. Yeah. Maybe a little too handy. He's 17, about so high, dark-headed. The name's Eula Johnson. Wearing some kind of plaid dress and a white hat with roses. You seen her? Might have, might not. Looky here, lady. It happens to be my sister we're talking about. Lady, it's been a long, mean night. Just plumb full of disappointments. But I'm gonna get an answer out of you. Yes, sir. Just as sure as gasoline burns, I'm gonna get an answer. I might have seen her earlier this evening, riding with a young fella. They stopped in for gas. A real nice lady. Ain't she a nice lady, John Wesley? Yeah. She's a real nice lady. Tell me something. You think you can remember that young fella's name? Name on the credit card. Vaughn. Jody Vaughn. He lives up in Frenchman's Bank. Much obliged, ma'am. What'd you do that for? Surprise for you, Speedy. I didn't ask to be took to no hotel. And what's more... This is my home. All you high-steppers seem to have the idea that just because of girls... You said what? This is my house. My home. You, you live here? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh, well, I, I surely do apologize. I... Oh, well, I... Come on. Oh, no. Thank you. I could Come on, you get yourself pneumonia out here. Uh. Oh, 
Jody, I couldn't. Believe me, this is my home. Well, it's about time, birthday boy. Hi, Clara. You, this is my big sister, Clara. Uh, you got caught in the ring, and I'm trying to get it to dry off. Oh, uh, no, thank you. I'll just be going along. Pleased to meet you. I don't think she has any place to go. Wait a minute, miss. We can't let you go trudging off in this weather. Come on. Nobody's gonna bite you. Let's get some dry clothes. <laughs> Hi, Susan. I'm sorry I'm late. Who is that? Her name is Eula, Papa. Eula. Mr. Varner, you have my abject apology. Jody not only seems to have gotten caught in the flood, he's brought one of the pitiful victims home for proof. Come on, we'd better say hello to the folks. Well, here he is, folks. Back from the rage in Florida. <laughs> I sure do take this kindly of you and your brother, Miss Clara. I never expected anything like this to happen. Being invited in and treated like a friend and all. All the way down here, he hardly seemed to notice me. Don't worry, he will. My things dry yet? I'm afraid not. Mm. I'll have to get you into something of mine. Oh, no, thank you kindly. I'll not trouble you so. I'll, I'll just sit here and wait for them to dry. It shouldn't be long. Now, don't be silly. Well, I'm afraid you you didn't understand, Miss Clara. I ain't a friend of Jody's nor anything like that. He just gave me a ride, on account of it was so wet and all. Right to where? How's that? Never mind, it's under my business. Well, to tell you the truth, uh, thing is, I got some friends over in uh, Jefferson that I was going to visit, and they'll be worried if I don't. Oh, am I interrupting? Come in, Susan, seeing as how you were going to anyway. Well, I was just wondering if... Well, my, my, isn't that the cutest little dress? I'll bet you made it yourself. I, I reckon it's ruined. Well, aren't you clever? I never could sew a list. Oh, well, I had a pattern to go by. Don't tell me, Missy, all these lovely little bows and the matching roses on this sweet little hat. Well, that's just pure creative. Did you want something, Susan? Oh, uh, just a touch of lilac water, Clara, honey. You don't mind, do you? You're my guest. All those people in uh, the smothering heat, it made me a little queasy. I wouldn't worry about it, Susan, honey. Probably just a hairball. <sighs> well, I think we better start getting some war paint on you, Eula. Looks like a fight to the finish. What? Red. Mm-hmm. Red. What are you talking about? Eula, honey, you are about to become the belle of this year now ball. Papa, you're not mad, are you? Mad? Mad that you brought here? No. Though I do confess to a mild degree of disappointment. Papa, you talk to me, and it must be English, because I recognize the words. But you sure don't get through to me. Well, let me put it this way to you, Judy. You're 21, and you're Varner, and if you're feeling your oats, that's only proper. Now, if you had brought home a painted woman to this party, or even a whole chorus of the Gaiety Burlesque over there in Jefferson, or anything but that poor little bedraggled, drowned sparrow of a creature, I'd have said... Papa, don't you understand? I just found her on the side of the road. I felt sorry for her, and I thought I'd bring her... Hush. Hush your back. Do you like it, Jody? Wow. 
thousand dollars for a college education? That's all you can think of to say? Oh, wow is ample, sir. Come on. Now, that's what I like. A woman with some confirmation. Where is she from? What's she doing here? Would somebody kind of tell me who she is? Dad's coming out. Sure, Susan, sure. Well, come on. You may carve up the meat. Don't mind me. I, I was just... Know what you was just. Just playing Mrs. Varner. Not Will. Jody, I bet. This is Jody Varner. Twant neither. Why so? I, I was just making believe. Besides, it ain't polite to mark another. Oh, I wasn't mocking. I was marveling. Didn't think Jody Varner had that much sense. What much sense? To invite you. He did, didn't he? Mister, I'm just here because they didn't have the heart to leave me out in the rain. Do you work here? Nope. First time I've been inside this place. Got a farm a few miles west of here. Well, howdy, country. I'm Eula Johnson. Then quick. You uh, you uh. Huh? Sounds like your boyfriend's looking for you. Eula. Told you he's not my boyfriend. It's plain to see I don't fit in here. I say you fit in any place you can get to, and stay. Eula. Eula. Oh, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. Oh, do you two know each other? Just met. Admire your taste. Tell your daddy that air conditioner is working now. Okay. Shall we go and mingle? Jody. I'm sorry to interrupt. Your daddy wants you. And I have some real good news for you, honey. Come on. The George is driving over to Jefferson tonight, and he said he'd be glad to take you along. Isn't that right, Judge? Happy to. Uh, Jefferson. You did say that was where you were going. Oh. Uh, to visit friends? Yes, I... Uh... Uh, oh, oh. What's the matter? Oh, 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 I'm feeling dizzy. There, everything's going round and round. I... Well, you better sit down. Oh. Oh. oh, I get took like this from time to Aaron? time. Let's have a look. Right. I, I think it's my circulation. I don't think it's anything too serious. I don't think we'd better move her, Papa. Oh, you don't, eh? Clara, well, looks like this young lady's gonna spend the night. Be obliged if you'd see to it. Yes, Papa.
Well, yep. She don't look like we're gonna make it this night, Curly Dog. May not look it, Johnny Dog, but we sure pop gonna make it. Thanks for your trouble, Tommy. Ah, no trouble at all. I'll drop the title clearances off at the bank. I'd be obliged if you'd give them to my son. He's down there, look. Go on! <laughs> He'll be down there. <laughs> Here. Morning, Miss Euler. Morning. Jody. Morning, Papa. Well, I wish I could swim in the pool all morning. Indeed, I do. <laughs> but I wasn't lucky enough to be born the son of a rich man. Thought you were supposed to be at the bank this morning. The bank. Papa, I plumb forgot. I'll expect you there in 20 minutes. Exactly. Yes, sir. See you, Euler. Excuse me, sir. Miss Euler! Just a minute. Well, I'd say you made a very quick recovery. Yes, sir. I expect you know I was just putting on. I expect I do. Sit down. Well, looks like Miss Clara's been out of garden. Say, uh, these friends of yours over in Jefferson, wouldn't they be likely to be worried about you? Friends? Oh, uh, no, sir. They just more or less look for me when I get there. Oh. Do you know what these are, Miss Euler? Why, they're seeds. That, that's right. They're miracles, every one of them. But it's a peculiar thing. You've got to be careful where you plant them. Cotton is best in bottom land, corn at the edge of a hill. Plant the wrong kind of seed in the wrong kind of soil, and it just won't flower. You're thinking I'm not good enough for Jody Varner. I don't doubt that you're good enough. Good and plenty. But there's a big difference between being good enough and right. I suppose only Miss Susan Beauchamp's right. No, I don't know what Jody's told you or what's passed between you. Mr. Varner, nothing has passed between us. And if you're thinking... Hear me out. The point is, Miss Susan Beauchamp is going to lead that boy of mine to the altar one of these fine days. You can just bet on that. I'm just trying to spare you the hurt. I dare say you're not well fixed financially. Come see me before you leave. I deem it a pleasure to be of help. I come almost 18 years without so much as hearing your name. I reckon I can make it the rest of the way without your help. You're mistaking me all the way down the line. No mistaking an open door. You don't have to show it to me twice. I don't need a hay rack to fall on me. just left for the bank. The bank? That's nice. Unless it's Mr. Jody Varner you wish to see. Jody Varner, yeah, that's the one. You tried him on out here, huh? Who is it, Andrew? Really, Mr. Jody, I don't think... You the one they called Jody? Uh, yes. What can I do for you? Where is she, black boy? Who? Girl you picked up last night in your automobile down by Morgan's Hill. My sister, name of Eula Johnson. Up there. She spent the night here last night, buddy boy. Now, wait a minute. Hey, you got old curly dog by the arm, Bubba. 
What do you want? I come for you. What do you think? You figure I come up here to laugh with you on account of you brought my promised wife here and kept her for the night? Andrew, would you ask Miss Euler to come down? Oh, well, Peter, you just might have to after I talk to you. Jody, who are these people? Beeman, ma'am. Curly Beeman. This here's John Wesley Johnson. He come for Eula? How dare you come to this house and threaten my brother? If Eula wants to go with you, she's perfectly free to do so. Until such time, you'll wait outside. I reckon not. Well, I'll call the sheriff and see what he reckons. Well, that could be a big mistake. You should start bringing sheriffs into a thing like this. Then it all comes out. Don't it? What all? All about how this fella done uh, picked up a 17-year-old gal and carried her across the state line. Ain't there some kind of law against that? Mr. Joe! Mr. Jody! I can't find it. I looked every place. I looked and I called. She just isn't there. Well, where could she be? I don't know, sir. Bet you they got her cached away someplace, Curly Doll. Well, I bet you they better find her pretty quick, like. They're gonna be in real trouble. That's right. Listen, we at the hotel up on the square. One you call Little John's? You tell your daddy to meet us up there. Him and you. And you make it quick, buddy boy. Come on, John. Lee. Andrew. You sure she's not up there? Possibly, Miss Claire. You better go and tell Papa. I'll start looking for her on the road. She can't have gone far. Oh. Howdy. What are you doing here? Oh, you, you've come for your new name. Oh, why don't you set yourself down and rest? Uh, down home, I always cook my brothers a good hot dinner. A uh, man needs that. I'll get the stove going. Oh, and I, I cut you some kindling. You was long. I, I, I borrowed your clothes. I, I hope you don't mind. How'd you get here, anyway? Oh, I asked some fellow on the road. Uh, said he was a neighbor of yours. Uh, shad somebody. Oh, he was right nice. Drove me right to the gate. Well, that was mighty thoughtful of him. Just wonder how I happened to get so lucky. Well, last night you seemed kind of country and nice. And I was hoping I could stay here and help out. Oh, just long enough to get me bus fan a little steak. Well, you can't. I'm nickel and diamond in here myself. I can't afford wages. Uh, I, I don't mind waiting on harvest, please. I can cook and sew, and I'm used to working real hard. And, and I don't eat a whole lot, and I'm quiet enough. Though I might take some reminding at times. How old you say you were? Eighteen. Well, almost. Oh, but I've been doing house chores since I can remember, and, and work in the fields, too, when I'm needed. Hey, I'm, I'm real good at tomatoes, weeding and cultivating. And, and there ain't a potato bug born can escape my eye. Well, if I were you, I'd go back to Jody Varner and tell him I'm sorry. For what? Whatever was said in anger, whether it was your fault or not. Oh, uh, now you got it all wrong, mister. I didn't leave there on account of no little spat. I was shown the door. Will Varner? He even tried to pay me to leave. If I never hear that name again, it'll be too soon. Welcome to the club. Uh, can I stay? Let me think about it. I was just pointing out the facts to her. Well, I still say it was pretty high-handed. She was my guest. You were leading her on. Leading her on? Yeah, you must have been. Papa, I swear someday I'm going to understand you because I'm going to make it my life's work. You start sparking one of these country girls, she thinks you're serious. Sparking? 
We swam a fast three lengths of the pool together. Is that a lifelong commitment? Yeah. You're expected. Annie, don't let nobody in. I want this conversation to be private. What is it you want? What do we want? You look on, disappeared like she swallowed up in earth, and this here man come asking what we want. I want a little Eula back, mister. I want my little bride to be. She's being looked for, and she'll be found. She better be. That's right. She better be. I hate to see you adding kidnapping to the rest of it. All the rest of what? I see, Mr. Barner, we, uh, we kind of simple folk. But we understand that boy of yours broke some kind of law. A federal, U.S. government law. I take it you're referring to the Man Act. Yep. That's the baby. That's one says if you uh, take a girl across the state line with some kind of going on in mind, then you're in great big trouble. Ain't that right? Now, she was hitchhiking. I gave her a ride. That's all. You took her to your house, buddy boy, and she spent the night there. Now, don't you forget that. That wouldn't, uh, wouldn't sound too good in a court of law, now, would it? Now, you just listen to I'll me. I'll handle this. Now, you hear me well, boy. Nobody's ever been known to blackmail me with any degree of success. Blackmail? <laughs> ain't no blackmail intended, mister. That ain't to say that I'd be too proud to accept a little wedding present after we got this whole thing straightened out. Wedding present? Yeah, there's a, there's a farm I had my eye on. For you and me, you understand? I... I reckon, uh, oh, about 3,000 ought to swing. How are they dropping a the bucket to a man like you, Mr. Varner? You see, we've been doing some asking around about you. Well, you've been asking the wrong people, because I wouldn't give you three cents. Not if I held first mortgage on the U.S. Mint. Well, we've got plenty of time to talk about that. After you brought Eula back. Five o'clock. I give you the five o'clock, you understand? After that, we're gonna have to start thinking about talking to the police. Come on, John Wesley, let's go. You, go help your sister find that cracker girl. She kind of got too far. Where am I gonna look for her? How do I know? You didn't have any trouble finding her last night. Go on, get. Yes, sir. A bottle of beer might help. Especially if it was to be laid across that thick skull of yours. What have I done now? Forgotten your birthday? No, you forgot that last month. Oh. I must have done something more recent to earn your disapproval. Well, you've got to pay off those two night crawlers and get rid of them. You've been eavesdropping. Every chance I get. Do you know they're right? What's three thousand dollars to you? I don't pay blackmail money. Not ever. It's a matter of principle. You can't let this thing go to law. You've come up the hard way and made some big enemies. Men with newspapers at their beck and call. Do you know what they'd do to Jody if this thing got out? There'll be joy and clapping of hands. And your son's name will be Dirt. He's innocent. <laughs> That's entirely beside the point. Innocent or guilty, they're gonna have a field day. The rich, spoiled boy and the poor little backwoods girl. <laughs> there will be a dry eye in the state. You think I'm going to let those two maggots back Will Varner into a corner? I don't submit to pressure, Minnie. You know that. If I did, I'd have been a married man again. Long since. Hmm. Everything all right? Bacon crisp enough? Grits to your taste? Fine, you look fine. Just wait till you stink tooth into my butter beans and ham hocks. Eula, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. But I've been thinking. There's a woman in town, Minnie Little John. She runs a hotel. And I wouldn't be surprised if she'd take you on. Well, much obliged, but I don't think I'd want to work in town. 
Not this town, anyway. She was. Don't don't tell her I'm here, please. Mr. Quick. Mr. Quick. No need to stand on ceremony, Miss Claire. Old friends like us is combusting in any time. I'm warm and I'm dusty, and I'm not in the mood for your wit, Mr. Quick. What do you have, Miss Claire? Speak out. The world belongs to those who know what they want and take it. Where is she? Who? Eula. You think she's here? I know she's here. I spoke to Shad Tannen not 15 minutes ago. Eula! Help yourself, Miss Claire. I won't even ask to see a search warrant. Told you, no girls. Present company accepted. You don't have to stand there looking like the cat who got the cream, Mr. Quick. Personally, I wouldn't mind if you had an entire harem up here. Neither would I. Miss Clara, you're behaving like a jealous woman. But please, Mr. Quick, I need your help. Eula has to be found. Well, maybe she don't want to be found. You ever think of that? Maybe she doesn't want anything more to do with you, Varners. Your daddy asked her to leave. You aware of that? Two young men came looking for her this morning, threatening to make trouble. She's a minor. And Jody drove her across the state line. Well, why didn't you say so instead of barging through that door like a bloodhound hot on the scent? I'd be obliged if you could find her. I take it as a favor to me and to my brother. All right, Miss Claire. I'll tell her what you said. Thank you. Ask her to come to our house. Well, when I talked to Papa, he said to ask her to come before five. She said? Must have been my brother and Curly Beeman. I didn't know they were after me, I swear it. You in some kind of trouble? If I wasn't, I am now. This year was supposed to be my wedding dress, mister. Would have been, too, if I hadn't took Buck Fever and lit out across the fields. I can't go back with Curly. I can't. Law says you don't have to marry anyone you don't want to. Fella who passed that law didn't know Curly Beeman. What am I gonna do? Watching you. I'm sorry. Well, not that I blame you for being nervous, seeing as you're staring a jail sentence right square in the face. Susan, you surely are a comfort. I can't tell you how glad I am you dropped by. Well, I'm not going to sit here and be a hypocrite. You're at that girl's mercy, and you know it. She'll be here. You bet she will. And that's when the fun will really start. What do you mean? I mean, that's when she'll start accusing you of every outlandish thing in the book. She and those two she works with. Works with? Well, it's old as the hill. Some little old gal hitchhiking by the state line, and along comes Mr. Dimwood and gives her a lift. Then along comes the brother, and then the boyfriend, and out comes the checkbook. No, Susan, you're wrong. Eula wouldn't. Eula wouldn't what? Jody, honey, you really shouldn't be let out alone. You're telling yourself she really liked you? Then how come she went just galloping over to that good-looking farmer boy's house the first chance she got? I told you. Papa asked her to... I know what you told me. 
But you've been had, honey child. You've been used for a fool. And that's the plain truth of it. It's her and her friend. Come in. I'll wait for you. Thank you. We can wait in Papa's study. He should be along any minute. I'll see you, Susan. Eight o'clock, Shaw. Right. Sit down. What's the matter, Jody? Well, what do you think's the matter? There's nothing like two or three years on the chain gang to put roses in your cheeks. The chain gang? Unless, of course, Papa decides to pay that money. But that's a hundred to one shot in anyone's future book. He does have his principles, you know. Well, what are you talking about? Papa's principles, they're very large around here. And if you think... Well, you said something about paying some money. Don't pretend you don't know. I'm on to your little game. It's as old as the hills. And if you and Curly think you can get away with this... Curly? Yeah, Curly. He's the one you're supposed to be engaged to, isn't he? Might be worth the price of admission just to find out who you leave with. Him or Ben Quick. You know, for a little old country gal, you sure do get around like a Ferris wheel. I don't know what you're trying to say, Jody Bonner, but I've done nothing to be ashamed of, and you've got no right to talk to me like this. Why, you're as bad as your papa. And to think I actually came here to help you. I'll bet. Well, I did. And you want to hear something funny? When I left here this morning, I cried. I cried because I didn't get a chance to say goodbye to you. I suppose you cried all the way over to Ben Quick's house. Well, I'll tell you this much. Maybe his house doesn't have chandeliers and carpets you gotta wade through like bulrushes. But over there, I get treated decent. And I don't get insulted or accused of things I didn't do. You, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to... Don't touch me! I was a fool to come here in the first place. Listen, you look. Wait, wait, you look. Please, I'm sorry. Let, let Forgive me. Let go me. I never want to see you in this house again. You, I'm sorry. Honestly, I am. <laughs> What's going on here? You, well, <laughs> sister, what they done to you now? Can I let you alone for five minutes? I didn't do anything, Papa. Not much you didn't. How come she's crying? Never mind. You got your little mountain flower. Now take her and go. Now, now hold on just a minute, Mr. Varney. You're not getting off that easy. No, sir. Time we start talking about that wedding present, or would you rather we take this weeping 17-year-old little gal over to see a U.S. federal marshal? Well, what wedding present? Three thousand dollars, little sister. To help you forget what you've been through. Yeah, and to help us get started on it. Think of that, sister. One thousand dollars apiece for each of us. I'm gonna buy you an awful lot of rings and arm bangles and pretty dresses. And you know something else? You won't even have to marry your old curly dog if you didn't want to. Ain't that right, curly dog? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did my son do anything at any time to indicate to you that his intentions were other than honorable? Tell him. Tell him the truth. You know I didn't. Yeah, tell us. Did he say anything to hurt your feelings? Or whisper something to bring the blush of shame to your cheeks? Or maybe he come scratching on your door in the dead of night. Or offered you a sip of drinking whiskey from a bottle? Papa, don't you see what they're trying to do? Seems to me they've already done it. You will take a check. Delight. Come on, Joe. You mean you're really going to pay him? No, boy. You are. You're going to labor all day, every day, 
seven days a week until every last cent of this is paid back to me. Go be a good Samaritan. Wait a minute, Mr. Bonner. You don't have to give them any check. Hey, you look, what, what, what you talking about? I just want to say that your son was ever a gentleman. And I wish to thank you all for your kindness. You look, come back here! What's happening, Papa? You going, Missy? Don't come on. Wait till we get out. If you wait, you going home now? Get in that car. No, I'm not. I'm never going home. Get in there. Jody, what'd you pitch in for? I almost had him. You're trying to be a big man in front of Eula or something? Come on, Tiger, let's go bind your wounds. Don't come calling again. Not to this house or this town. Not to this county. Come on in, boy. We'll take a look at that eye. Front door, Mr. Varner? Not for wine and not for walnuts. Iodine, boy. Sharp, stinging iodine. than the first one I saw you in, Miss Hula. Thank you, Mr. Varner. Good night. Good night. A strange man, Mr. Varner. Fine man, once you get to understand him. Of course, that could be a life's work. You planning to marry him, Miss Minnie? Well, we've been engaged for ten years. I just haven't told him about it yet. Oh, he forgot his package. Oh, I'll take it out in the morning. It's a long way to the Varners. Is it, Miss Minnie? I wonder. <laughs> 